It is WWDC time, and Apple just announced a bunch of shiny new features it's adding to all of its operating systems. And this year, our friend the iPad got a bunch of new stuff. <laughs> um, so full now. Yeah, okay, so let's go over everything that he just ate. I'm really excited about how much they're focusing on multitasking and giving the iPad more Mac-like features. First up, this version of iPad OS is called 26. It's named after the year it's released, kinda? It's named after 2026. Apple is doing this with all their OSs, the iPhone, iPad, the watch, even Mac OS. One big change coming to all of their OSs is that they're visually unified them with the same design feel. Their last major interface overhaul was iOS 7 way back in 2013. Now this new visual interface is focused on this like frosted glass look. Apple is calling it liquid glass and it's not just frosted glass. It does have this flowy feel to it with some of the interface elements. I love it. I, I think it looks sharp. It's one of those subtle updates that will make your device look new and fresh without being like a complete design overhaul. There are also a lot of little tweaks to the interface here that just look great. Like it floats over some of the content instead of just being locked into a solid bar. And I love some of the things they're doing with their icons here, like the ability to make them look clear or adjust when you're in dark mode and changing the height of the font on your home screen to match the content to your background. Just really nice touches. Don't feel so good. Just hold it in. You could do this. I better hurry and talk about some of these multitasking features because this is where the iPad OS gets really exciting. So first up is the new window system. This looks cool or has the potential to be cool. A few years back, Apple tried to go halfway with a feature they called Stage Manager. It was kind of the worst of all worlds. It was too strict to be useful, but you also gave up a lot of screen real estate while using it. You were better off just going dual screen with the apps that you wanted. Here we have real windows and they act like real windows. You can arrange them, you can move them around, you can resize them. It reminds me a lot of what Samsung was trying to do with their Dex mode a few years back on Android. I was thinking about my desktop workflow. What makes things useful there? And it's the ability to drag files from one place to another. I'm always working in Photoshop or Adobe Premiere, and I'm constantly dragging audio files, video files, image files into Premiere or an image file into Photoshop. I love that we can now do this on the iPad. At least in theory, some apps on the iPad don't do that well, others do. But now that this functionality is here, I think more developers are gonna be designing around it. One thing I did notice here uh, immediately is that the windows look kind of biggish, too big. That of course makes them easier to manipulate with your finger. And maybe it's just that they're showing them off this way so that people get the idea of how the iPad will look. But I hope there is a way to make the header bar smaller. I am not gonna be interacting with this with my finger. I'm probably going to be using the pencil or maybe even the magic keyboard cover. The other thing I think is really interesting here, which makes these look too big, is the roundedness of the corners. They're really rounded here. And I get why. They are following the same quarter radius of the corners of the iPad screen, so they're going for that unity here. But honestly, I think they feel too big. They cut too much into the interface. So along with the multitasking, they've added some ways to organize these. For example, there's tie similar to how Windows 11 looks, so you can drag these to predefined locations. And like on the Mac, you can just swipe up with your fingers to get to your home screen or, or see your desktop, whatever they call it on the iPad. But your apps are still there. You can kind of see them off to the side. If you want to swipe again, you can make them disappear. Oh no, it's... This is a short video. Just hang in there, man. They are adding a menu bar along the very tippy top of the screen. So if you drag your mouse cursor up there while using the trackpad, you get this very Mac-like interface. I, I really like this. I would love to see apps like Clip Studio take advantage of this to make their app look more native, not like it's just slapped into an iPad interface. I mean, they have done some stuff to do that to make it look more procreate and that sort of thing, but still, they can they can go further. And then I was thinking about Affinity, like Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo. They do some really cool interface stuff here on the iPad already. I think they're going to have a field day with this stuff. This also works on external displays. I can see with a mouse or a keyboard, uh, even the Magic trackpad really turning this iPad into a desktop replacement. I do think it's going to take time to get there, but these steps are really important to give developers the tools they need to really get us there. We, we also got the feature. Are you? 
I'm good now. Okay, yeah, like I said, files app, let's go. They finally seem to understand that when you're designing or video editing, like I mentioned before, you are juggling a lot of files. You are bringing a lot of pieces, parts together into one place. And the files app is really central to that. So here, there is a better details view with resizable columns. The folders that they have here are really taking a lot off of what is available on Mac OS, like the ability to change the folder colors or add icons to them. And oh my gosh, finally you could choose which app you want to open a file in. Gone is the day of navigating that freaking share menu and hoping that the app that you want to open your thing is is available to you so you're not bumping around trying to get a JPEG into the right place at the right time. Whew. And like I said before, I don't expect features like this to be seamless on day one, but over time as the developers have access to this stuff, I think it could dramatically improve the way we use the iPad. Oh, also you can set an app as like a default app to open a file in, so no more navigating each time I wanna send something to Procreate, Woohoo! I'm gonna be sending you all the PSDs. And lastly, you can put folders into the dock, Woo! So when you're in an app, you can just swipe up from the bottom of the screen and grab the folder you need to open the file. What's that that came out of me? Oh my gosh, you threw up a discount code in my Learn to Draw in 60 Days course. Let's wash that off and put it in the description. They've also added some video audio controls here. So for example, you have more control over your audio input. You can choose whether to use the iPad's microphone or maybe an attached microphone. And it's, it's pretty granular, so you can change it on an app by app basis. They're also adding in voice isolation on a system level. So if you have a microphone plugged in, you can remove all the background noise. This is also integrated with things like AirPods and all their headphones and stuff like that too. Oh, and this is nice. This is something that matters a lot to me, but probably not many of you. Whenever I am on a podcast, one thing that is very common is the person who's putting the podcast together wants you to record your own audio locally so that they can stitch it together so you don't have people talking over each other or you can kind of isolate things easier. Um, so now on the iPad, you can do that. You can isolate your video and your audio on a call and just say, Save your audio. So you have a nice, simple file you can send over to somebody when you're done. I love it. Another big thing is, and this is going to be great for video editors, is you can see how your progress is going on something. So for example, if I export something from a 3D app or a Final Cut Pro, something that's going to take some time to process, I can leave that app and it's still going to process in the background and go to my email. I can go to Procreate and Draw. I can do something else while it's doing that. It's so stupid simple. You can do this on any desktop. You can finally do this on the iPad. They have added other things too, but they just didn't really talk much about them. They just breezed over it. They added something called a read pen, which is like a calligraphy pen. Like I said, they didn't go into detail there, but I'm really curious to dive in and find out what the read pen is. And I'm sure there are some other things here as well that I just don't know about yet. I'm hungry. Don't start with me. If you need more stupid tech videos like this one, check out my review of the Surface Pro featuring Dale the Murder Goat. Oh, I said that out loud. You know what? Don't. Just close YouTube, go hug your family. You will thank yourself later. Bye-bye.